Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated. And you should be able to see that CT. And so let me just look through the checklist once again, so I keep in mind. So we've do, do the veins of the liver and then the segments of the liver and some of the ligaments and the port hepatis, and then, and then I'll come back to this. All right, so if you're all ready to go, then I'm also ready to go. Let me just keep a chat window here open in case anybody chats. And there you go. Let's keep on that end down here, I guess. All right, let's go. So, all right. So as we as we go down, I mean, with the abdomen, as you would know, begins right as the diaphragm uh, ends, and so the diaphragm is a lower. Uh, so not lower, superior border of the abdomen. So here we are in the thorax and you can see the diaphragm showing up here. As soon as the diaphragm is very thin, thin structures, so as soon as it clears, you, you're going to start seeing the liver underneath there. And there the diaphragm is opening up and under the, just under the diaphragm, you're seeing the, the stomach and there you're seeing the spleen. So that we've done, but we're going to be doing a bit more about the liver today. I'm going to be spending time on the liver and to show you how we actually go through the liver and its segments. Uh, so as you can see, this big chunky structure of the liver, uh, extremely important vital organ. Um, it takes a lot of insult because all the blood uh, from the gut actually first comes into the liver from the portal vein and, uh, and then the liver does its thing and then all of the blood then has to drain into, um, um, into uh, the IVC. So, all right, that's cool then. Oh, thank you, Justin Champion. Okay, so what do we start? First thing I want to show you is this structure here. We went through it last time also. So I'm going to take you inferiorly now. I'm taking you inferiorly and look, this structure joins with this structure. And and if I keep going inferiorly, this structure is coming from this structure over here. And so that was the portal vein. And the portal vein forms from the superior mesenteric vein. When the superior mesenteric vein joins the splenic vein. So this is the splenic vein. So I'll show you the splenic vein once once again. We'll follow it all the way to the spleen. And there's that sp that's the splenic vein. So the splenic vein comes to the other end and joins here. That's where it's joining. So it looks like another vein is coming from this way, but that's a portal vein. So that's where the splenic vein joins and that's where the portal vein is formed. And the splenic vein joins this in, uh, the superior mesenteric vein. And that's where the portal vein is formed. So um, then we follow the portal vein into the porta hepatis. And here the portal vein divides into two. And it forms the left portal vein and the right portal vein. Now let me bring it back. Now I'm going back in fairly. So look at the portal vein here. As it, as it comes back here, you can see that it continues on this way. This is the right portal vein. This is the right portal vein. And then you see it dividing here, and that's the left portal vein. So the left portal vein goes there. The right portal vein continues this way. I'll also like to show this to you in the other section. It's a bit easier to see it in the 2D view. I come back to this 2D view often, but the thing, um, the thing that I want to show you, it's it's good to see it in the 3D. Uh, sorry, in um, sorry, I, what am I saying? I bring you back to the coronal section. It's, it's important to know it in the axial section. Uh, but in the coronal section also becomes useful. So that's the portal vein again. And as you can see, as it comes into the porta hepatis, that's the left, left portal vein. And if you keep going the other way, that's the right portal vein. So those are two portal veins there. And, uh, oops, so let me open this up again. And go back to abdomen. And let me use the cross, actually, so I don't do that again. So there's the portal vein that's gotten a bit bright, but nonetheless, that's the there's the portal vein coming through. That's the portal vein, 
and then the portal vein divides, as I said, to left and right, and then the right portal vein, which is right here, has an anterior division and a posterior division. So those are the main. The left also has a few divisions, but they're small divisions and they're not too relevant to know. So the left portal vein goes over there to the left side of the liver, which you will see up on this way, and the right portal vein has two divisions, which are anterior and posterior. And that's the that's mostly what we need to learn about the portal vein, just making it slightly nicer for my eyes. And then the next important veins that we need to know are the hepatic veins. So now I'm moving superiorly. And you notice these three structures coming up. That is the left hepatic vein forming. It hasn't formed yet. That's the middle hepatic vein, and that's the right hepatic vein. And these veins will come together and join the IVC, which is right here. And so watch that. And so that's how they come in and join the IVC. And that's the IVC. And the inferior vena cava will then cross the diaphragm and go into the right atrium. So back again, that's the IVC again. And then you can see the three main veins over here, the three main tributaries, the right uh, uh, hepatic vein, the middle hepatic vein, and the left hepatic vein. And then, and the IVC is here. I know it's not too clear, but that's where the IVC lives. And the IVC, I'm not, I'm just going to follow the IVC now, all the way down to where it shows, it becomes a bit more obvious. So that's the IVC. So we will follow the IVC through this also. But I'm going to have to spend some time at the liver because I need to explain to you the segments of the liver. And the segments of the liver, there are eight segments of the liver. And how those segments are divided is first this in the divide in a strange way but this is how it's done they they these are the three main veins so the middle hepatic vein the left hepatic vein the right hepatic vein so first thing you do is you sort of draw, draw a line here through that vein coming towards into the center actually a bit more towards the port hepatis then you draw a line there and then you draw a line here it's like dividing the liver into four parts one part is here one part is here one part is here and then one part is here so those are four parts but but there are there are eight segments and so the next way is that these same four parts are then divided in the cross section at the level of the portal vein so let's go back down to the portal vein so there's that there's a portal vein here coming into the port apparatus that's sort more or less the level of the portal vein so this is where it is divided so these below these areas is, is a separate segment and above these areas is actually a different segment and what i should have done is actually i should have um let me open a schematic diagram first because it actually does help with that and then the other segments uh, become more obvious so yeah that's a good diagram if it opens up Radiology assistant. This is actually sometimes it's a good website. Some things it has are actually quite good. Now I wish. Um, so if yeah, this is really good. So if you look at this, you can see it's not too clear up there. Actually, oh there now it's clear. So you can see the three hepatic veins coming in. So it's the middle hepatic vein that looks like the right hepatic vein. That's the left hepatic vein, and then this is the portal vein with its right and left branches. And so this is how the segments are divided, that these, these hepatic veins sort of divide the segments, and then at the level of portal vein, they're divided again. So, and there are eight segments. Actually, there are nine segments. I mean, but there are eight segments. It's so confusing, and let me explain that to you. Segment one is this. Segment one is the caudate lobe of the liver. So segment one is its own segment, and I'll show that to you. Then it goes to segment two, which is this upper segment on the left above the portal vein. Then below the portal vein is segment three. Then segment four is divided into A and B. And so segment four A is above, segment four B is below. Uh, and so uh, four is actually two segments, uh, but it can be considered one segment. And I'm sure there's a surgical significance for it. So that's four A above, four A, four B below. And then there's five, which is uh, below on the right side, then the six, which is below on the right side, then this further right, then the seven, which is higher up, superior on the right side, and eight, which then moves back into the center. So for some reason, 
they they sort of curve this way and come around this way and and four is 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 for some reason in the middle i don't know why they na- numbered it this way uh, i think it was a french surgeon who numbered it and he's numbered it the way the streets in paris are numbered it's like they go in some circular fashion um, but that's how they're done and uh, so the first section is a conic lobe then two three four a four b a is four a is superior four b is inferior five six seven and eight now let me show this to you on a ct and it's just slightly more it's more interesting i mean this is how you're going to have to view it in in most cases and the pathology quiz i've got a few tumors in different segments so we can practice there but so let's look at the others. This is the level of the portal vein again. So this would be, oh, first, the cardiac lobe. This is the cardiac lobe right here. It's got a, that's the cardiac lobe. It's right next to the IVC. So that is segment one. So where is segment two? Segment two is superior to this segment, this area. And segment three is inferior to this area because this is the level of the portal vein. So if I move superiorly, then, uh, this oh, I'm sorry, this I've actually moved in fairly. This is segment three, and if I move superiorly, this is segment two. So this area, this whole area here, is segment two uh, at the superior aspect of the liver. And as we go down and cross the level of the portal vein, it becomes segment three. So let's go back up again. Where is segment four? Now we've got these two these veins. So segment four is this area between the middle and left hepatic vein so this is segment four but above the portal vein which we are right now is segment 4a so this area is all segment 4a but below the portal vein as the portal vein crosses this area becomes segment 4b apart from the cardiac lobe so this area is segment 4b then if we move back up yes Uh, you know, it is, if you go, if you go to Radiopedia and say segments of the liver, they will actually give you a whole annotated, um, uh, version of this. Uh, I could, I couldn't do it. I could do it, but it, I have to go through each, each plane and annotate it. It'd take me a bit too long to do it, but you can find it. Just, just Google, um, uh, segments of the liver and, Radiopedia will come up and it will take you to an annotated version of this. It'll actually be very good. No problem. And so 4A and 4B are here. Then if you if that's 4A and if you go inferiorly, it's 4B down here. Then 5 is over here. This segment is 5. Segment 6 is over here. And if you move superiorly above the portal vein, then that's segment 7. And that is segment eight. And that is how the segments of the liver are divided. So it seems a bit confusing and it, you, it takes a little bit getting used to, to by, by doing it. But that's how the segments are divided. And, um, and let's look back at this again. So it, it's at the portal level of the portal vein. They divide. One is the cortic lobe. Then the upper left is two. The lower left is three. Uh, then four is in in this middle area for a and b then five is inferior but towards the right side six is inferior further right seven is superior on the right and eight is coming into the middle uh, on the right side and that's how that's how they're they're divided and and was asking if you if you if you google it as a matter of fact just now that we're now that we're teaching i might we might as well do that because um It'll help. Liver Radiopedia. Look, I've already been there, as you can see. And they've got this annotated image. So let's go right. Where should we start from? Let's start right up here. And so you can see there's... um, uh, there's uh, the diaphragm is up here, so it's quite superiorly. And as you go in fairly, this is the IVC. These are the three veins. So this is your um, middle hepatic vein. This is your left hepatic vein. That's your right hepatic vein. 
And then this is segment uh, seven, that's segment eight, that's segment four A, that's segment two, and segment one is invisible yet, but let's keep going in fairly, and that's how it's divided. Oh, that's segment one, sorry, the cardiac lobe is visible right here, that's segment one right there, and as it goes more in fairly, you're going to see the portal vein show up, that's the left branch, that's the right branch of the portal vein, and now the segments will change, that's a portal vein main trunk. And now the segments now will actually, here we go, that's segment three, that is 4B, that is segment five, and that is segment six. And that's your portal vein coming through. So it's actually good to see it annotated, but it is also good to see it not annotated because in the when it's annotated you actually can't see the liver itself so there you go any questions could look like it looks like we're all sort of clear with that so we've done the veins of the liver the portal vein the left portal vein right anterior and posterior division the ivc uh the left middle and right hepatic veins we've done that they drain into the ivc and the segments of the liver all right, let's just go through the last little thing, the falciform ligament. The falciform ligament, when you go further down, you see this portion of the liver. You see that area of the liver? That is the falciform ligament. That is the falciform ligament. And the falciform ligament sort of continues. And here is the ligamentum venosum. It's actually far more com It's more obvious in other, other uh, CTs. It's not very obvious here, but you can see it. There's, there's a bit of an indentation here for ligamentum venosum, but you can't see it very well here. But the falciform ligament is very nicely seen, and almost every CT, you will see the falciform ligament very, very well. The next thing I want to say is the porta hepatis. What are you going to see in the porta hepatis? So if we've seen the portal vein, we've seen the divisions of the portal vein, they actually happen in the porta hepatis. But what other structures are there? So if you remember from theory, there should be um, uh, the left and right hepatic ducts in there, and there should be the hepatic artery proper and it dividing into its left and right branches. And you can see that here, uh, uh, but it's not too obvious. The hepatic, this is the hepatic artery proper, and it actually divides into its left and right branches. It's not too visible here, but if you, if I take you to this view, it actually becomes much, much nicer. Let me just make it a bit larger. And this is the portal vein again. And when you see the portal vein, you can see it divide nicely into left and right. Uh, but, so where is the hepatic artery? That's the hepatic artery. That's the hepatic artery proper. And that hepatic artery divides into its left and right branches. You can see that over there. The, the hepatic ducts aren't too visible, but you see this duct? That is the bile duct. And that, and that is the gallbladder. So there is the cystic duct right there. And that is the bile duct. And if you follow this up, it gets a bit blurry, but this is the region where the left and right hepatic ducts are. Sometimes it's visible, sometimes it's not. But this is the region, I mean, they're, they're, abs they're absolutely visible. Sometimes there's better defined, but I can't see them too clearly in this one. But that is what you will see at the port hepatic. You will see the, uh, that's where the left and right hepatic ducts are. Um, but in this in this uh, uh, in this CT, the cystic duct is fairly obvious, and the bile duct is quite quite clear, and you can sort of see it going down to the pancreas, which we will do in a second. So, any questions there? So now that we're here, you can already see the gallbladder. So this is where the gallbladder is, and so you can see the whole um, fundus of the gallbladder up there, the body of the gallbladder down here. Uh, and the neck of the gallbladder is, is, is sort of seen right over there where it goes into the cystic duct and then it joins the bile duct. Um, and what you really need to do is you actually need to be able to see the gallbladder in this um, in the axial view also. So as we go uh, in fairly, the gallbladder starts presenting itself and it keeps coming. And there you go, this to the main body of the gallbladder and then it will slowly just disappears and so that's how it how it how it sort of ends uh but what you also have to keep an eye out for is the bile duct and you know it's a bit of a mush and i'm not sure how clearly you can see it but that's the bile duct 
Um, it's, it's fairly clear on my screen, but I don't know how it translates over the internet. But that's the that's the bile duct. And follow follow the structure as I move superiorly, and you shall see it it's coming into the gallbladder. And there it entered the gallbladder. And if I follow it inferiorly, you will see it going down into the pancreas, which is right here. We haven't done the pancreas yet, but I will. And there it sort of fuses in with the pan pancreatic duct. And that is, is the bile duct. Uh, if you want to have if you want to have a view of all three of these structures together, then let's do that also. And so there you see that. I will click on that. And you see the bile duct right there. And it's right over there. If I keep moving it further down, you will see it continue down that path. Sorry, further up. And there you can see it joining with the gallbladder, with the cystic duct right there. At the same part, you can, so we can see the portal vein here together. And let's just look at the hepatic artery here also. So there's the hepatic artery coming from the celiac trunk. Let me show you the hepatic. We've done the celiac trunk. Remember we saw the celiac trunk um, yesterday? Uh, and there you go. We keep following. That's the common hepatic artery right there. We keep following it there. You can see it right there. Becomes very beautifully visible here, and you can see its whole path here. And now, while I scroll through the path here, have a look over here, so that you can sort of see how it sort of moves in that area. And then it divides. You can see it dividing into the left and right over here, and then they become a bit difficult to see. So that is your left hep hepatic artery, and that's the right hepatic artery right there. Um, and you can also see it given off the gastroduodenal branch here which goes towards the stomach and duodenum. So uh, that's the port hepatis, and that's what I'd like to show you there. Any, any questions for that one? Fantastic. Welcome, I didn't see you before, but uh, can someone share the Dropbox link with her so she can get the, she can get the information also? Okay, no problem. So what was left? When good time. So we've done the we've done the gallbladder. Any questions? We've done the bile duct also. I'll get into the pancreas now. Any questions? Uh, let me know. Thanks, Jessica. Okay, now to the pancreas. Now the pancreas is quite elusive initially because it looks like this big blur, but after a while, if you see enough of them, you will you will find it. Now there's two landmarks that you should use for the pancreas. One is the splenic vein. So we've already done the splenic vein. So can you find the splenic vein? So here's the spleen and there's the hilum of the spleen and that's the splenic vein moving around from there. Once you find, let's do the whole path of the splenic. So throughout the path of the splenic vein, the pancreas is right next to it. So let's, so now that I've done the splenic vein, I'll show you the pancreas, the pan, that's, that's the pancreas right here. That's the pancreas right here, moving along, along with the splenic vein. That's the pancreas right here. And this pancreas continues along over there. Okay, so the pancreas has its part. It's got its uh, head, neck, body, and tail. And the antenate process. So the tail is right near at the splenic end. So let's go back to the splenic end. So that is the tail of the pancreas. As we move this way, that becomes the body of the pancreas. The neck of the pancreas, by definition, is where the portal vein forms. And that is right here. So that is the neck of the pancreas. And then the and then this is the head of the pancreas. And the head of the pancreas then comes around the duodenum. And it curves around the duodenum. And this was the duodenum as we did last time. And this is where the antsnet process is. So the pancreas is in all this area. As, as you move back, that's the pancreas again all the way back towards the spleen and that is the tail if we again see the structure um, over here uh, the sagittal section isn't too useful here but that's the tail of the pancreas right there as i move forward there you can see the body of the pancreas and as i move a bit more this way uh, let me just that is also the main body of the pancreas on that side 
and keep coming through that's the main body of the pancreas pancreas actually is seen the best in the axial view and then that's the neck of the pancreas and as you move then from the neck you move uh, moving up the other way there that is the rest uh, of the head of the pancreas and the unsnip processes around this area so that's the pancreas any questions cool well that didn't take too long um the kidneys yes 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 yeah that's that's so and and uh are you with us are you with us when they when do you have to go uh because half an hour so oh well um you know what i'll let me because what i've got here is that in the pathology it's it's very obvious in the pathology because when it when it blocks it we might as well do that now because when it blocks it it actually does it really so where's the pancreas again uh no which one was it it was one of these all right now that is a tumor in the head of the pancreas and that has blocked the bile duct and that is the enlarged bile duct and that is the enlarged gallbladder and uh and so it's and that's that's the pancreatic mass right there and it would have obstructed it further down so that sorry that is the that is a gallbladder i'm sorry that is not the enlarged bile duct that's the enlarged bile duct and that's the enlarged gallbladder so that's the enlarged bile duct that's the enlarged gallbladder and that's the head uh, that's the uh mass in the head of the pancreas there you go yeah yeah it's it's hard to see the uh when it's enlarged uh, the bile duct looks much more obvious no problem all right so let's go into the kidneys then and so we go high up let's start from the diaphragm all right so let's go down then you're going to start seeing the, the kidney pop up on one side first. well right now it's the pancreas and then there's the so which kidney is higher <laughs> the left kidney is higher uh so that's that that's the top of the left kidney and and you can see the whole body sort of developing and then here right there you see the right kidney show and then you can see the whole mass of the kidney come and i'm going to scroll through the kidney and then i'll come back uh and then that's the whole mass of the kidney on both sides and as you can see uh the left kidney is becoming smaller and now the right kidney will also become smaller so let's do one kidney at the time let's do the left kidney first let's go back to the top of the left kidney now first thing um here this is the pancreas or, or, or actually that's the pancreas a bit further up uh here you see that that's the top of the kidney of the left kidney showing up now just before the top of the left kidney you've got an adrenal gland and adrenal glands are very hard to see they're very small they're this little triangular structure uh and those are the adrenal glands uh, they're right above the kidney and they show up first so then the kidney shows up and then you've got the you know the whole structure of the kidney um and then you've developed the renal pelvis starts showing up that's that's the renal vein going to the ivc that's the ivc right there so that's the renal vein that is the renal artery if you follow that that'll go into the aorta that's the renal artery i'll take it back that's the renal artery right there oops so there you go i'll bring it back up okay so that's the renal artery 
then if you look still keep your eye here that's the renal pelvis and that is the ureter um and i'll follow the ureter in a second let's keep keep going down and then all of the pelvis now is becoming smaller uh and this is the a little bit of the inferior part of the pelvis and now you've got the you know the renal medulla and then the cortex at the inferior pole of the kidney and then that's the end of the kidney uh let's also do the ureter now the ureter is a bit elusive you can actually see it um but it's less about whether you can see it it is more about knowing where it is so uh here now you can see them. let's move slightly down that's the renal pelvis and the ureter is going to show up over here as we keep going in fairly that now it's going into the ureter that is the ureter that's the ureter that's the ureter and if you keep following the ureter it's it, it's it stays on the uh, psoas muscle and then slowly moves medially so you will see this going towards that way that's the ureter and then you know you sort of lose it. it sometimes it's more obvious but it stays on the psoas muscle and and slowly moves a bit anteriorly and medially and it keeps going downward anteriorly and medially on the psoas muscle which i i can't see it anymore here uh but i'll show you i'll tell you what the path is because that's what something that that's what you need to know and so uh, just keep your eye because if you're looking for your text stones this is where you're looking or any enlargement of the ureter this is where you're looking because this is where it is and you keep going down and you see now notice the aorta has bifurcated here so let me keep uh, this is still a psoas muscle let's just go back to the aorta the aorta bifurcates the ureter is still here but then the common iliac artery bifurcates and as the common iliac artery bifurcates see that over there at, at that area around its bifurcation the ureters actually move anterior to it and the ureters when they move anterior to it then they move posteriorly downwards i don't think i'm following the ureter that, that looks like an artery and then they post, follow go down backwards here and then they find their way into the bladder posteriorly so they actually move quite posteriorly and come under the under the uterus and they move back into there and so that's the part you have to see you have to look for the ureters you're not always going to see them and in our case here you can sort of see them half of the way but then they they sort of disappear because they could be collapsed at that time when the ct was taken but that's what you need to see that's where the path is and uh we'll do the same thing i'm moving right way back up now here you see here you can see the ureter very clearly if you see this structure here you will see that will join the renal pelvis and there it goes um so so the ureter was was not too clear uh in that one further down uh in this one also let's do the let's do this kidney now and let's do the right kidney again just before the right kidney shows up you'll see a small little structure can be triangular we can see a triangle on that side usually it's triangular in shape and that is your adrenal glands then as as the kidney moves as we keep going down to the kidney that's the main body of the kidney now you can see the calluses of the kidney the major and minor calluses of the kidney then here you've got the renal pelvis you can see the ureter coming up here what you the renal vein uh sorry did, did i miss the renal vein because the renal yeah that's your renal vein so the renal vein is very short um on the right side because the ivc is right here and that's the renal artery if you follow that that will take you down that will go into the aorta so that's the renal artery you move back down there that's the renal artery there and the renal vein is there and um and let's follow the ureter so let's follow the ureter downwards there's the ureter that's the renal pelvis that's the ureter so let's follow that structure downward keep an eye on that structure it's on the psoas muscle and it will slowly it's right there you can still see it still there you can see it still there you can see it and slowly it's just going to sort of vanish <laughs> and then you're like where to go but you keep moving down the medial aspect of the psoas muscle that these these aren't the ureters these are not the ureters and then um and then as the uh, common iliac artery divides 
which is slightly higher up here. As the common iliac artery divides, uh, the ureters move forward and then move posteriorly backwards as they go down. And they actually move quite posteriorly back and then they come back under the uterus and then they go into the bladder. There you go. This structure that you can see here that looks quite close to the ureter, if you follow this back, that actually is the gonadal vein because you will see that actually slowly going, moving up, moving up, and that will move into the IVC right here. Yeah. So we won't go into the gonadal vein in too much detail. I shouldn't even mention it. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was, um, while I was going through Radiopedia, actually Radiopedia has also great annotation of the ureter. Uh, I think that's the oops. That's the annotated ureter. So let's move it all the way to the top and keep going down. There's your renal pelvis is showing up, and there's your ureter, right and left. And keep following those, right and left, right and left, right and left. So there they are on the psoas muscle. Now they're moving medially. You know, you probably lose them right there. I guess you can see them a bit here. And there, as they move forward from the common iliac artery, they move posteriorly and into the bladder. Now, this is a male. You don't have a uterus in this one, but uh, that was a pathway of the ureter. Let's follow it back up. Oh, there's a button. That's the ureter. Moves posteriorly. Comes anteriorly from the common iliac arteries. Remains medially on the psoas muscle. And then moves laterally and then into the kidneys. There you go. Any questions for that one? So there you go. Okay, the last one, the spaces. And let's hope I can remember all of these spaces. So yeah, let's 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 go back to the top. So the first spaces are the subphrenic spaces. So this right subphrenic space, which is just under the liver. And there's a left subphrenic, subphrenic space, which is just uh, under the stomach and the spleen. So this area is a subphrenic space. So, you know, fluid can accumulate there. So this is a, this is, these spaces are important because there's potential spaces. And so fluid infectious infections or other issues, even, even, um, uh, edema, ascites, etc., can accumulate in these areas, and so you have to keep a bit of a, a mind of these areas, uh, and particularly the terminology. So these are two uh, spaces, subphrenic spaces. Then there's a perisplenic space that is essentially the space all around the spleen. So that's the perisplenic space, and that goes all around the spleen in all these areas. Okay, then from the kidney. There's, there's a place called the hepatorenal recess, which is the space between the kidney and the liver. Fluid or ruptured bile from the bile, uh, a gallbladder bile duct can also accumulate there. So that's this area, hepatorenal recess, throughout this area. Then just around the kidney, just around the kidney, there's a renal capsule just around the kidney, and that is called the perirenal area. P-E-R-I, and that's all around the kidneys. And then there's pararenal areas. Now, if you look, there's a bit, bit more space outside the kidney. And you don't see it too much in this, this person, but, you know, if, if a person was slightly more obese, there's, the kidney gets this nice, well, I, I can't say if it's nice or not, but a, a layer of fat around it. And so a layer of fat around it is still per, perirenal. And then there's another fascia around that, which is a renal fascia, and then outside that area is the pararenal area. So the pararenal area is sort of a circular area outside the, kidney, outside the kidneys on both sides. Um, and that's the pararenal structure. Let me show you the kidneys in the sagittal section. 
oh sorry coronal section because they're very nice kidneys are seen nice in the coronal section you see it's good to see the kidneys in the coronal section here the perirenal area is just around the kidney and then that extra space around the kidney is the perirenal area and so that those areas are very uh, are in potential spaces also there you go so you can see the kidneys well here you can see the adrenal glands there on this side on this side they're not too not too apparent but they exist right up there don't confuse them with the splenic structures there's your adrenal gland um and um and so that's i think that's with, good with the kidney then the next uh, important structures are the paracolic gutters the paracolic so the left paracolic gutter is right here with the um with the descending colon so this is a a, 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 a a lower area where a cytic fluid you know is going to accumulate here especially if the patient is lying down the back so this is your um, uh, left paracolic gutter right here this whole area is the left paracolic gutter it continues down till until it becomes uh, goes into the iliac crest so that's still the paracolic gutter and it's moving into the iliac crest and on the and on the right side this is uh, the right paracolic gutter so not into the iliac crest but up here so on the right it's not too big because the liver comes in but there you go up till there and if we keep moving further down then those are the then you've got the uh, this is where the sagittal section will actually be really good so if i open up the sagittal section let's come down here right? let's go there and open up the sagittal section um let me move it up And then there are, so this is the rectum coming down this way. Uh, and this is the rectum coming down this way. So there's a, there's a space between the rectum and the uterus. That's the uterus. And that's the cervix and vagina. And that's the recto-uterine pouch. That's the lowest part in the peritoneum. So fluid tends to collect there. If you're lying down, you see this is the hump here. So fluid from here will tend to collect there. And if you stand up, the fluid from there will also fall into that place. Uh, but if you lie down, then fluid partially will fall here, partially will fall that way, and will go into the pericolic gutters. So the fluid, uh, peritone, these are the main air pericolic gutters, and the recto-uterine pouch is where it is uh, the most common fluid accumulation. And the recto-uterine pouch, if it is a man, then it's a recto-vesicular pouch, which is a pouch right here instead of the uterus. Uh, and in fee in a female, there's also a space here, which is between the uterus and the uh, uh, and the bladder, uh, and that's the oh, I forget what that's called. Let me just remember the uterovesicular space. That's the uterovesicular space uh, that's between there, and then around the bladder, there's a perivesicular space also. So these are the important ones. Well, the main main important ones. Actually, all of them are equally uh, equally important. You will hear of them pretty often um the ones that you'll probably hear of the most are the paracolic gutters and the recto uterine pouch also called the pouch of douglas um but these those spaces around the kidney also get to get mentioned fairly often and the subphrenic spaces also get mentioned fairly often because in intestinal uh, uh, rupture you can get air in there uh when the gallbladder ruptures you get you know bile in there so those structures are all fairly fairly important all right i think that actually ends the whole demonstration any questions yes yes which one was merit well yes the hepatorenal recess is called the morrison spell yeah so that was uh, back if you go that this one the hepatorenal recess that's morrison's pouch Excellent. All right. Well, I think that's about it. Any questions or shall we move on to the quiz? Let's, um, so let, I'm going to start quizzing everyone. Okay. So you're, you're the first one. So how, how it goes is, is that if you see every successive space, it's slowly, I keep taking it further down. So, um, T11, T12, so let me go back to the top one that we start with. We start with this one. So that starts with T9. And then we go into T10. 
then T11, T12, and L1, L2, and I think about L3. That's really as far as we go. So let's do this. So, so first one. What? What is? What would you think A is? Correct. Well, well, you know, it, it, it would have been had it not been so high up. So it's really high up. Would you like to, would you like to pass it on? Jessica, do you have, what do you think that is? No, portal vein is a bit lower, a bit lower. I'll, I'll take it to Hi up, the lungs are right here. It's, 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 it's easier than you think. Correct, that is the IVC. Correct, all right. So now that you know where the IVC is, now we're going to go lower down. So there is going to, I, I think, I can't remember probably, but I think I've labeled IVC in every section. And and I haven't labeled the aorta, so that's the aorta. So I haven't labeled the aorta because we did that last time, but I've labeled the IVC even though we've done it in every section. So um, there'll be an IVC in every section. So let's go down one more. So let's. Okay, this is T9. No, actually, no, no, no. Actually, this this is in the wrong place. I should delete that. This isn't the space, so we're going to do that later. Okay, so let's go back to this. This was the IVC. Now, we're a bit further down. So, uh, were you there when we... Yes, any, any, any... Did, did you manage to catch this one, or did you come after this one? Sure, sure. Nope, nope, nope. C, C, yeah. D is the spleen. D is the spleen. Correct. E is the left hepatic vein. Yeah. Yeah, middle hepatic vein. And B is the right one. So you've got this, and so you should be able to get C. It's easier than, no, it's easier than you think. Where are these veins headed? They're headed to C. Know oh, this? It's the I, it's the IVC. It's the inferior vena cava. Yes. So if you saw the IVC, IVC. So if you go further down, that's where the IVC is. Okay. So keep that in mind. I said I've got the IVC labeled in in every one of these images. So keep that in mind for the rest of you. So there is going to be an IVC, and it will be around that area. Even if you can't see it, that's where the IVC is. Okay. So let's go down. The next one might be no it's not too much harder it's a uh, similar structure so yeah hey no that's good that's good e is e is what is e left or right e is left correct and b is right c is the ivc and what is d that is the spleen. Good job. All right. Correct.
Correct. Correct. No. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Yep. Okay, what if I tell, okay, C might be a bit tricky, but B, you know it, you know it, you know, you know it. That is the IVC. Yeah, no, that's great. And don't worry about kids. And, you know, this is a crucial time for kids because it's bedtime and all that. And, you know, it's just such a crucial time for kids right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Mom's like learning to do medicine. <laughs> and uh, this is, you're going to hear my kids screaming a little bit because when bedtime comes, it's always a nightmare. So C, as I said, something associated very closely to the splenic vein, but not the splenic vein. It is, it is the pancreas. But now you have to tell me which part, which part of the pancreas. Correct. Tail of the pancreas. Okay, done. Good job. Hard one. It is. It 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 is. It, it is the port. It's a branch of the portal vein. Yes, that's the right branch, right portal vein. Correct. Finally, yes, IVC, yes. It was, it was also on the previous slide. Correct. Correct. That's the blank vein. That's the spleen. I didn't label that. And yep, now A and C, they are the branches of the right portal. What are the branch? Which, which one? Which one is the A? Is the anterior branch of the right portal vein and B C is the posterior branch of the right portal vein. All right, that's good. Okay, no, that's, that's, that's still pretty good. Okay, fantastic. And that's the abdominal aorta. Uh, okay, let's keep going. B is the portal vein, correct. C is the IVC. Yes, that is good. Correct. That is the splenic vein. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It is the body. Yes, it's still the body of the pancreas. Too hard. It's extremely hard. I will. Correct. That is fantastic. Yeah, that is the hepatic artery. Fantastic. Good work. That is really good. All right. Excellent. Jeff, you've got a tough one, but. D is the IVC. Correct. I where's I I is the right kidney. No, I is not the right kidney. <laughs> what is I then? <laughs> You've 
confuse yourself. It is a left kidney. <laughs> it's the. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. High <laughs> is the left kidney. <laughs> yep, yeah, you're you're right. He is a right kidney. You cannot get left and right wrong in radiology. It is as wrong as getting the organ wrong. But that's all right. Com com yeah, it happens. It happens. It happens all the time. They've they've been in previous slides. No, neither of them are. No, these are you should know J and H. You've done them. I'm I, I they're, they're from the pre I mean they're coming they're continuing from the previous slide. So there's structures that were on the previous slide as well. No. They're not the hepatic artery, they're not the pancreas. But okay, you did say one of them. No, J is the portal vein. So if J is the portal vein, what would H be? No, that's all right. Correct. Yes. That is a splenic vein. And do you want to do the rest or do you want to pass them on? Okay, I'll go ahead. Take it. Yes. Because there's, there's just so many. All right. So that's all right. No, there's just too many. All right. So the, rest are, the rest are you until you say, okay, I want to pass it on. A is the fast form ligament. No, 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 by it, no, it is, but you're very good. It is the pancreas, but by definition, where the portal vein forms, what part of the pancreas is that? Neck. Neck, neck, neck of the pancreas is where the portal vein forms. So where the splenic vein meets the um, superior mesenteric vein, that is the neck of the pancreas. So that's how you find that. So that's the neck of the pancreas. Head of the pancreas is, is here. Is F, yes. What is head, F? Yes, F is the head of the pancreas. B, B is B is B is hard. It would be hard, but it's not the hepatic artery. Oh yeah, that's true. It is bile duct, absolutely. That little thing, and that's correct. That's the bile duct. So now it's not pointing to it anymore. That is the bile duct. Let me pull back again. Oops. Yep, that's the bile duct. And C, yes, C is the gallbladder. No, that's true. But look, if if you did this, let me let me how do I do? Let me just um, if you look here, it's actually it's easier in the real thing. If you see, there's going something's going to pop up here, and then. That's that's the gallbladder, and then it stays around, and then it vanishes. That's the gallbladder. And if you look at it from a sagittal uh, coronal view, then you'll see it pop up here. Oh, there it is. That's the gallbladder. So it's actually fairly obvious.
Cool. So, well done. You got right. Okay. Let's do the next one. Oh. You got one. And this was also on the previous slide. Correct. Oh, the back duct is uh, way, way too high. The back ducts are very small. So again, if, if again, if we look here, let's look at this one. Um, yeah, the, in some, in some they're larger, but usually they are very small. And so where's the gallbladder? So you see, that's the gallbladder. The bile duct will sort of become visible here in a sec. There's the bile duct and it goes up, that's the cystic duct, and that up there are the common hepatic ducts, and they're, they're just there for a very small period of time. So if you see a, if you see a little thing coming down here, then that's, that's the bile duct, common bile duct. And as you can see, now that you know where the pancreas is, you can see how it moves into the pancreas. All right, where were we here? Okay. Next one. Oops. Again. Feel free to answer one or two and then pass them on. B is the IBC. No. It is, it is, I mean, that's still the pancreas there. That's still the pancreas there. So yeah, it is, it is, it, it, it is related to the pancreas, but it is, I mean, it's, it's close to the pancreas, but it doesn't really affect the pancreas in any way. It's coming from the IVC. Yes, which side? Yeah. Left the renal vein. It's pretty long. Yeah, that's good. And A? No, that is actually the bile, bile duct is bile duct is right there. That's the bile. Duct. Yes, that's the that's the duodenum. That's the first part of the duodenum. Oh, sorry, the second part of the duodenum. So what? And so, so, but that's not the duodenum. That's, that's a structure. No, that opening is a duodenum. That's a structure that sort of wraps around that area. No, yeah, it's part of the pancreas. That's still the pancreas. So what part of the pancreas wraps around the duodenum? No, next to the head of the pancreas. Unsinate process. I, I think I may have forgot to describe that in my uh, in my demonstration, but that's where the unsinate process is. It goes around the head of the duodenum. So great. So now we've done the pancreas. So there you go. So I think after this, as we go lower, the pancreas is done. Was there the IVC up here? I didn't. I didn't label the IVC. So that's the IVC. That's the aorta. All right. Let's keep going down back. To C is the renal pelvis. Oh yes, and you have to mention which renal pelvis it is. That is the left renal, and D is the left ureter. Yep. Yeah. I, that may that I actually am confused myself. It could still be the pancreas, but what? Yes, yes, it could be the answer or, or or the or the head of the pancreas. Correct, either are correct. Mm -hmm. 
B is again easier than you think. <laughs> no, no, that is not the pancreas. There's always this structure here. I guess that's why I've always put it there. IVC. Yes, that is the IVC. Correct. All right. Let's keep going down. Oops. Okay. Okay. So I think these are just parts of the kidney, except, except E. That's correct. E is the IBC. Yeah, renal hilum is fine, but it's part of the renal hilum. No, it's not just the renal hilum. Not the artery. Hmm. No, it's not the vein. Nope, nope, nope. It's going to the ureter though. It's going to the ureter though. That's 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 further up here. I'll call that the major calyx. Yes, that is the major cal. One of the major calyces, and yes, that's the renal pelvis. Yes, there is a cortex. That's the medulla. Correct. Yes, there you go. The capsule is the border outside. So it'll be a slightly further back. But yeah, you got it right. Okay, excellent. Correct. Correct, that is the right ureter. Correct. I think that's it. No, we just go slightly lower. Now we're at the level of L3. It's next to it's Yeah, that's that's the ilium. That's the ilium. That's the ascending colon. That's the aorta. Oh, Correct. <laughs> so the IBC has been evading people, but I hope not now. And I hope not after this. All right. So that's done. Now we um, so all the anatomical things are done. Now I just need to see the spaces. Uh, Jessica, so not the structures, but the spaces. Sub, 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 yeah, no, correct. Subphrenic space, right? Subphrenic. And then the left subphrenic. Okay, we'll do that later. All right. That's all one space. That's that's all one space. It's all one thing. Correct. Correct, perisplenic space. All right, well done. All right. You've got three. Yes. I don't, 
I don't think so. I haven't come across it unless they may be, but I haven't come across it and I may be wrong. Yes, hepatorenal reset. And they also call it a pouch of pouch of moisten. The moisten's pouch. Correct. Yes. Well, you know, you, you, the paracolic gutter would actually be just there. You're not wrong. But this is another space. This has, there's a fascia that separates this. Yes, that's a pararenal space. Correct. Yes. Pararenal space. And left. And yes, that's left pararenal space. You know that you know that's a good question and now that you ask that I should just bring up that let's just do this uh, para renal space they've got a good some of these images are actually good um, this one is kind of good and it's also from radiopedia I, I wish I don't know if you can see it Open edge and uh, see how big is it. Okay, so here you've got the kidneys. Then this is renal fascia. Where is it labeled? It should be labeled somewhere. I don't know why it's not labeled, but that's the renal fascia. No, this should be the retro. That should be the retro renal fascia. So that's the perirenal space, as it says, and this is the retrorenal fascia, and that's the perirenal space. And perirenal has a posterior and an anterior. And so, so this is, you can't really see these spaces very well in CT, unless there's edema, and if there's fat, you can actually, but you can see them in dissection. And this is all so that's the peritoneum and so all these structures which is descending colon ascending colon kidneys pancreas and the ibc they're all retroperitoneal but for some reason the kidney has several layers you know so one here and then one here and then there's a lumbar fascia here that does that transfer oops got that one wrong all right let's go back to this no this yes no Oh, yeah, in CT, no, you can't see the fascias differentiating in CT. You can see the spaces in CT. But you can't see the two layers of the fascia. Now, if you dissect it, you could see it, that there's one layer and then there's another layer right next to each other. But in CT, you can't see the two layers. But the perirenal space and the pararenal space are actually quite fairly obvious. I mean, not uh, sometimes quite obvious um, and usually, usually obvious. Um, this retrorenal fascia, which is this double space, this is very hard to see. So the, all right, here we are. Okay, so that's done. Whose turn was it? It's a space again. That's that, yeah, no, ascending is on this side. That's the descending colon, and yeah, there's no splenic flexure here. The spleen is a bit superior, so you can't see the spleen. So that's the kidney. Left paracolic gutter, correct. Correct. Yes, but you, I think you might be right. I'm actually confused now. That could be it. No, no, because it's in the peritoneum. 
That might be it. Actually, I think I'm wrong. I think that's the right, left paracolic guy. As a matter of fact, now I might as well have a look because I'm forgetting myself. Let's see what they say. Can we have a cross section? Have they labeled it? They haven't labeled it. Okay, here we say. Can't say. I think that makes more sense. So it's this, this I think should be the pericolic gutter. So it's in the peritoneum. And so I hope I don't get it wrong. Obviously on both sides, but I'm not sure if it's behind. Hmm. So I actually don't have an answer for you. My confusion is, is it this area that I've just pointed to here or is it this area that I've pointed to here? So I, I actually don't have the answer to that, but it is here. It is around the descending colon. So it is, uh, so you got that right. It is left paracolic. All right. Sorry, that is B. These are two different things. Correct. Yes. No, that's that's a mistake. I labeled them both A. That's accidental. This should be B, because that is a pericolic gutter, but this is the left pericolic, pericolic, pericolic. Good. I think we're almost done. No, here we are. All three are pointing to the same space, and this is. Yes, you answer this one. Correct. Correct. Rector, you try and pass it. Correct. I spelled that wrong anyway. All right. And sorry. Yes. Are you guessing or you can actually see it? Yes. Correct. That is the vesicle you drive pouch. I won't write the answer. And I think that's the last one. That is it. So um, if you still have capacity then the next one is the pathology quiz which you've done a bit of but uh, let's start again oh this is good so what we're doing here for a few of these is we're trying to figure out what segment is this of the liver so it'll help you understand the segments of the liver better so um, I will I'll obviously start with and uh, what segment of the liver do you think this is? And if you are forgetting your segments, um, you can use this diagram again. Do I still have liver segmentalist anatomy? Yes, I think. Might as well use this. There you go. So to review the segments, we might as well do it again. To review the segments, because then we'll have to decide them. Um... So first of all, you look at the portal vein and its left and right branches. And the segments are then cut across them and the segments above and the segments below. Um, and so that's the horizontal cut. And then the vertical cut is sort of between these three major veins. So that's the left hepatic vein. And so further left to the left hepatic vein are two and three. 
divided by the portal bay. M moving towards the right from the left, between the left and middle hepatic vein is section 4A and B, above and below the portal bay. Section 1 is the caudate lobe of the liver, so that has that's its own section. Uh, and then when you move from the middle vein to uh, the right vein, the hepatic vein, then above the portal vein is section 8, below the portal vein is section 5, and if you move further out, more right from the right hepatic vein, above the portal vein is section 7, and below it's section 6. And so it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It sort of goes in a circular fashion. Uh, and that's how they're numbered. So let's, and one more thing I'd like to show you here is that if you come up here, and let's go up to the portal vein. So you see these are the three hepatic veins, the right, middle, and left hepatic vein. So that, that's what you should be looking for. That's one thing they should see to find these. Second thing, you should sort of see where the level, level is. So if you can sort of, if you can see a bit of the lungs, then you know it's higher up from the portal vein. If you can see any of these three branches, you know it's higher up from the portal vein. Because uh, as it goes lower down, when you start seeing this structure, now you're getting to the level of the portal vein. So when you start seeing these structures or you start seeing, um, you don't see lung and the liver becomes a bit smaller and you start seeing the portal vein. Or when you go further down, you start seeing the gallbladder, then you know you are below the portal vein level. But if you can't see the portal vein, then you're above the portal vein level. And if you, especially if you can see these major veins, the hepatic veins, or if you can see the, um, the lung, then you are above the portal vein level. All right, so now let's get into this quiz. And so, what section is that? Okay, so when you ask questions, yes. Yes, so you're above the portal bay. Okay, now let's look at it this way. Okay, first of all, is it left or right? Yes, now this picture is like a, 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 a coronal view. And, and, so, and this is axial. Oops, okay, which one was it? It wasn't this one. Uh, Correct. Correct. So it is all the way to the right. It is all the way to the right. It, 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 yes. So this, this would be eight here. This would be seven here. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So this would be eight here. It would be seven here and it would be four here and it would be three here. Correct. So this one, no, no, no. Three would be here. So this one, it's this one. Sorry. So the mass here would be in section seven. Correct. And there you go. Six to seven. Absolutely. Well, it's an exercise. I hope the others. I hope the. I hope the others. Others found this useful because uh, we're going to do this again. So, um, that's not the mass. This is the mass. What segment do you think this is in? I don't know what the actually I actually don't know no 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 just I uh, ignore that no 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 the the mass is here yes that's section four that's section four I won't tell you where the section the first section is because I've got another one coming up for that but that is four absolutely and it could be four a 
but section four definitely if it's in the middle section four is you can call it section four uh, a and b well you can further differentiate but at least you know you got section four all right good job this is the math Mm, that could be right yeah 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 absolutely i think that's the middle that's the left middle and right yeah that could be true that's true that's true we're yeah i'd say we're above the portal vein too correct that's segment two all right sure just give us a thumbs up when you're back <laughs> Or I'll just check. Okay. This is gonna be hard because I should have I should have demonstrated it to you, but I didn't. <laughs> no, it's a mass in the liver, and it is above the. Yeah, it's a mass of the liver. That's the stomach, yes. That's the stomach. Yeah. You know, you would have you would I, I would agree that this is the four A region, but this is this is the this is the caudate lobe. And the caudate lobe is this is this small lobe, and if I if it's this it's a small little lobe that is sort of if that's the IVC it's right up that's the caudate lobe you see that's the caudate lobe, and it keeps going up and it keeps this so this area the caudate lobe has it is its own section this little area over here and if you look at the section this one it doesn't actually show it's like that little one over there uh, maybe segments of the liver section one might show a better image of it um, so basically it is a caudate it's this one like that's the caudate lobe you know section one so you you were so you were absolutely right there you got the right area but I didn't demonstrate the one part and it's actually my fault so I should have shown that to you but yes oh, this guy's done it with a fist that's a cool idea he's made the cottage glove look at that ha huh. you know for one for something that's uh, a bit confusing but all right so that is the cottage glove and so that is section one But, uh, but good job figuring it out. I mean, calling it 4A, I mean, that's, that's fairly correct for the way I described it. So, come on. All right. So what, what segment of the liver would that be? Yes, it's the lower pet. Could it be five? Could it be five? You know, you could you could say five or six, but wouldn't five or six be on this end? Six would be here. Yeah, because this is lower down in the liver. Yeah, seven and eight, seven and eight would be in this area, but above. So above six would be seven. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, actually, uh, no, above six would be seven. Six would be lower down. Above it would be seven. Eight would be here. So, so uh, let's let's do that again. Let me just see once again. Let me so so, so just be sure that I'm saying the right thing. Yeah. So this is five. So let, so you're right. It's lower down. So it's below this. So it either could be three. It could be four B. It could be five or it could be six. Above six is seven, and above five is eight. So let's go back to that one. Where'd it go? No. That one. 
Yes. So it's lower down. So you have to choose between the lower segments, which are 3, 4B, 5, and 6. Fair enough. Yeah. Sure. Is it five? I thought, yeah, I think, I don't know why it's segment three. But look, if you... Yes. So this is on... Yeah, so this... This this is... A, yeah, this is on the left. That's the right. This is more towards the left side. So that would make it segment three. So, okay. So does that make sense to you too, that segment three? All right, well, that's good then. Okay. Jessica, would you agree in segment three? You gotta go? That's right. No, no. Sure. See you again. No problem. No problem. <coughs> All right. All right, you're back. Well, next one is yours. Okay, what segment is that? Yes. Yeah, you can see the three. Yep. Correct. You're correct. And uh, that's very true. Now, what do I have here? Segment eight. You're very, it could be four. Yeah, that's true. So if it depends where the middle hepatic vein is. If that's the, if that's the middle hepatic vein, then this will become segment four. But if the middle hepatic vein is sort of here, then this will become segment eight. You're right. This could very well be segment four. All right. Okay, so we're done with the segments. So I think I think we've got a good idea of the segments. Now this is something else, Jessica. Can you figure out what organ this is in, oh, or what structure it actually is not in the organ? What structure? Yes. You know, you're not wrong. That is the pancreas. No, I mean, I'm sorry. You're not. You're you're not hundred percent right. It is right next to the pancreas. That is the pancreas. It is not in the pancreas. It is in a structure just closely related to the pancreas. The answer no. process will be that way, going that way, further down. So this is not in the pancreas. Sorry, the pancreas is right there. This is not in the pancreas. This is in this structure that is here. Yes, 100%. We've spoken about it several times. <laughs> when I tell you what it is, you'll like, oh yeah, you're right. No, because the portal vein, that is a portal vein thrombosis. Correct. That is a thrombus in the portal vein. Good job. Okay, Jessica. So if you've been in my pathology quizzes, I tend to follow a theme. So, you know, they, they, this is, it won't be too far from the previous one. Correct. Yeah, that's another portal vein thrombosis. Correct. All right, good one. No, actually, there's not this. Wait, that, that can be the white mass, but it's the whole liver. Yeah, that could be a particularly worse part of it, but the whole liver is affected here.
Mm-hmm. Correct. It is cirrhosis. Well done. I'm not sure if you can see hepatitis on, on CT. You you may I'm not sure. I actually don't know. But you may be able to. Because it's yeah, yeah, it's like pan hepatic, like the whole uh, whole liver is affected. So hepatitis is a good option. But chronic hepatitis will lead to cirrhosis. So that's a typical cirrhotic picture. Which uh, which is not too different from this one. As a matter of fact, I'll let you I'll I'll just answer this. It's actually still cirrhosis. A similar that is one of the cirrhotic nodules, or it actually could be a cancerous nodule also. So I'll 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 pass you on this one. I'll give you the next one. What do you think that is? I should make it bigger. What structure do you think it is in? And once you figure that out, it will become much easier. Oh, that's true. Yeah, just, yeah, 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 I'm so sorry. Correct. Yes. Uh, that density is correct. Yes, absolutely. Correct. Those are gallstones. And uh, I wouldn't put. Would you? Would you say that this is the same thing? Correct. So you found the gallbladder and there's stones in there. Sometimes gallstones appear as black because they've got air associated with them. So sometimes they're bright, sometimes they're dark. So keep that in mind. But pathology in the gallbladder, you know, sort of structures, hard structures you can see in there, gallstones. Okay. And I'll still be with you and I'll ask you to figure this one out. What is that? What structure was over there? Yes, that is the portal vein. Yes, it's nice and round. That is the gallbladder. And that is not a stone. No, it's an, it's an enlargement of a normal structure. But the common bile duct. That is an enlarged common bile duct for whatever reason. It could have been a stone, but that is a dilated bile duct. Good. So, well done. And uh, I'll keep you, so, uh, and I'll keep, I'll keep, I'll keep talking. I mean, this is, this is also, uh, would you agree that this is a similar structure? This is also an enlarged bile duct, which, which you can see more clearly. All right, so that's also a large bile duct. But what is this structure? That is the pancreas. I think that is the neck of the pancreas, but that is for some, what did I get there? That's an adenocarcinoma. Oh, that's, that's an enlarged pancreatic duct, actually. You can't see a normal pancreatic duct, but if it's enlarged, you can see it. And, and or is that, the, I can't actually say, or is that the enlarged pancreatic duct? You've got the structure right, that is the pancreas, but I can't figure out if, um, if there's a, is it, if, if, if the duct is enlarged and if you can see an obstruction, but you got the structure right, so that's well done.
Um, okay, now this is this is slightly similar, slightly different. So I'll let John after this one. That it is, I think it is just lower to the Ansnet. So the Ansnet has, or oh, maybe this is, uh, it is the pancreas. I'm not sure if you, it's definitely at the head of the pancreas. I can't say if it is part of the Ansnet or not, but definitely at the head of the pancreas. But you got that right. So it is a pancreatic tumor at the head of the pancreas. So that's good. We got the pancreas done, right? All right. Now. Now that is a little stone, but what structure do you think that stone is in? Uh, Correct. That is a stone in the pancreas. Correct. All right. That's excellent. And um, we did this, but we might as well do this again. And so they're pointing to this mass here, and which is a mass here, and it's led to a dilation of this structure here. Yes, that's the that's the head of the pancreas, and it's obstructed the conval duct, and that is how some the head of the pancreas tumor is usually picked up. Uh, because of jaundice and nausea and vomiting and uh, and so if anybody that presents with nausea vomiting and uh, high bilirubin and conjugated bilirubin you have to suspect ca cancer of the head of the pancreas yes. oh, good job all right same one the pathology is this thing here That is correct. That is a mass in the right kidney. And now that we're on that thing, do you see a mass here? And that is a mass in the left kidney. And the difference between infiltrative and well-defined is that some tumors, especially if they're benign, they have a well-defined margin, but malignant metastatic tumors have a poorly defined margin. And you can see them sort of, you know, like sort of met metastasizing into the tissue. And so they have poorly defined margins. So it's one of the things radiologists use to, you know, uh, sort of, uh, diagnose the mass. Okay. It's a little stone in which structure? That's renal cord. Right renal stone, most likely in the pelvis or in the calces. Correct. And uh, where would that stone be? Yes, that's a ureteric stone. Correct, because you know where the ureters are now. Even if you can't see the ureter, that could be the ureter. It may not be. But if you see a stone in there, then you're like, oh, like, this looks like a ureteric stone. Or if you're looking for someone with... Uh, like if somebody presents with severe flank pain and shows up in the emergency and you ask them to get a CT, then uh, if you're looking for renal stones, then that's this area you'll be looking through this area to see if you can see any stones there. Even if you can't see the ureter, this is the area you'll be looking at. So uh, good job. Oh, and that's the end. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my Facebook page. Please also support my work on Patreon and Kickstarter. It will be greatly appreciated.